The World Cup is the biggest stage in the cricketing world, and entering it as the defending champion is a challenge not all teams can handle. The 2023 World Cup's England side proved this to be true once again, as we saw the once deadly team crumble under pressure and get out in the group stages in a humiliating manner that disappointed fans and former players alike. End of an era for this white ball side. Do you agree? Yeah, I certainly do agree. And England's campaign throughout the whole of this tournament that makes me feel sad. What caused a side that won one of the most amazing World Cup finals of all time to break down like this? Is this really the same side that just won the T20 World Cup, defeating the best teams in the world with ease? What happened to basketball, and why didn't it work for this World Cup? How can a dominating team struggle to stand its ground? This is the story of England cricket and their humiliating downfall. Cricket is not just a sport for England. In fact, they're the founding nation of the sport. Records of an England national team date all the way back to 1739. However, it only really gained popularity in 1846 with William Clark's All England Eleven. But the true beginning of the sport starts with its most iconic rivalry. In 1877, England's first test series against Australia kickstarted what we know today as the Ashes. These exciting matches captured the hearts of people all around the world, and cricket as an international competitive sport was born. England fans are no strangers to disappointment in the World Cup. Their whole journey started in disappointment when they got out in semi-finals in the first ever World Cup in 1975 despite being clear favourites. Brilliant catch, a beautiful catch by Marsh, taking it almost out of Ian Chappell's hands. It is for kings of one day cricket in 1975. That was a tremendous occasion and we had another four years later, June this year. And once again, Clive Lloyd found himself put into bat. On this occasion, of course. The next edition in 1979 was much better as they reached the final but did not have any answers for the legendary defending champion in West Indies. And it's all over. And Hendrick quick to grab the stump. He's got his souvenir, but West Indies winning a deserved victory here by a margin of 92 runs. 1983 brought back more pain as they lost to a relatively inexperienced Team India in the semis. He can head it anywhere. That's it. Four runs off the edge. What a great day for Indian cricket. 1987 and 1992 brought them two devastating back-to-back -back final losses against their biggest rivals, Australia and Asian superpower, Pakistan. That's up in the air, he's getting under it, this could be victory, it is! Pakistan win the World Cup! 1996, 1999 and 2003 brought total humiliation for the team as they didn't even make it past the group stages. They recovered in 2007 by making it to the Super 8 in both the T20 and ODI World Cups, but made it no further. They got out in the same stage in the 2009 T20 World Cup. 2010 brought their first real trophy, but we'll cover that a bit later. This wasn't the start of a great period as a lot of pain followed after this too. In 2011, they reached the knockout stages after almost two decades and faced a humiliating defeat to Sri Lanka, who chased their 229 targets in the quarters without losing a single wicket. That's the shot that brings Taranga his century, and Sri Lanka have won the match. In the 2012 and 2014 T20 World Cups, they failed to make it past the group stages, and to make matters worse, they were runners-up in the 2013 Champions Trophy to the mighty India. This is Tony misses, but it doesn't matter. India win the Champions Trophy. 2015's ODI World Cup campaign was embarrassing for the Lions as they failed to make it past a young Bangladesh team to the knockout stages. Goes for hero, bowled in. The Bangladesh Tigers have knocked the England Lions out of the World Cup. 2016 would be another massive blow as they lost the T20 World Cup final to West Indies. The Pigs! Remember the name! History for the West Indies! Next year saw them lose in the semi-finals of the 2017 Champions Trophy to eventual champions Pakistan. What an emphatic way to do it. Pakistan have crushed England here in Cardiff. English fans had every right to lose hope at that point, but boy, are they glad that they didn't. Die-hard fans of Team England witnessed a change of luck. Before we talk about the amazing 2019 campaign, we need to circle back to England's maiden international trophy in 2010's T20 World Cup. Hey, down the lake side, caught down the lake side, is it? Yes! Three. Kevin Peterson's brilliance in the tournament is really underrated. His batting skills truly make him an all-time great. 
That will do nicely. Through mid-wicket, England charge onto the field. Paul Collingwood. England, the champions, the ICC World 2020, 2010. Speaking of all-time greats, who can forget the 2019 World Cup final? This is the tournament where it was finally coming home for England fans, but New Zealand proved to be a difficult opponent. With the score tied at 241, they needed a super over to make up the difference. Even that wasn't enough as both teams hit 15 in the final over. The boundary count got them the trophy, however. Yoon Morgan's boys had done it with a masterclass from Ben Strokes. Gatto's gonna push for two, they've got to go. It's got to throw, it's got to go to the keeper's end. He's got it! England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins! This tournament lit a fire under the England cricket team. Despite being knocked out in the semis in the 2021 T20 World Cup, be a no ball. Will it go for four? It does. the Palms quickly bounced back and won the 2022 edition of the trophy. He's hit it leg side. It's Ben Stokes with the winning runs. Who else? It's always Ben Stokes. The future of limited over cricket looked bright with dominant performances, notably a 10-wicket victory against India in the semis. That's high. It's over, Cody. England win. And young talents such as the players of the series, Sam Curran. In terms of red ball cricket, test coach Brendan McCollum and captain Ben Strokes introduced the world to Baz ball. This attacking explosive mindset meant that England was not willing to accept draws and reignited an interest in test cricket among the general public. We're going to chase this down. We ain't blocking out for a draw. We're either winning this or we're losing it. At first glance, everything would seem promising for this team. England had an experienced side who just won a white ball trophy and were changing the way test cricket was played with an exciting new play style. However, a bit of inspection would lead you to notice massive red flags even before the tournament started. Between 2015 and 2019, England played the most ODI matches in the world. This preparation is what made the team the best in the world. The management seemed to have totally ignored the values of this preparation as for the period between 2019 and 2023, England played less ODIs than five other nations. This drop from first to sixth in terms of ODI matches played was a sign of things to come. Another major issue that was obvious was over-rotation. Only Moeen Ali and Jason Roy played more than 30 ODI matches for the squad in the 2019-23 period. What's worse is that Jason Roy was eventually dropped for Dewey Milan for the World Cup. In other words, one of the most experienced players in their team would be part of their campaign. Speaking of experience, this team is old. Almost all the players are over 30. This puts a lot of pressure on players such as Harry Brook and Sam Curran to bring that young spark into the team. Harry Brook was also handed the massive responsibility of filling in the shoes of Yoon Morgan in the middle order, a role he never fulfilled before. In England colors. As if all this wasn't enough, one of the best bowlers, Jaffer Archer, was injured and this made the pace bowling much weaker. England entered the tournament with a lot of confidence by winning a major trophy a year prior, but they also entered it with a lot of problems. So did England beat the odds and have an amazing campaign? Well, we wouldn't be making this video if they did. To the dismay of their fans, England's title defense will go down in history as one of the worst in World Cup history, recording only three victories off 10 matches and ending the tournament at 7th. Losing to struggling side Sri Lanka and World Cup newbies Afghanistan are the highlights of this dismal campaign from the Three Lions. Yeah! Fold him! And it is over, and Afghanistan have the greatest victory in their history. What exactly went wrong? Even with the issues we discussed, this side has enough quality to make it to knockout Shirley, right? Well, in the tournament, three new issues popped up. The first was a clear case of poor strategy. The inconsistent selection was an existing issue, but in the tournament, this problem reached a new low as vital players such as Moeen Ali were dropped in the middle of the campaign. The worst of these bad decisions was seen in the match against South Africa, where all-rounders were dropped and they suffered a humiliating defeat by 229 runs. That's it! He was aiming for the stumps was Keshav Maharaj! ODI coach Matthew Mott clearly needs to consult Baz as his strategies are not paying off. England lost a bit of faith in themselves. They lost faith in their strategy, the all-rounder strategy, which they changed in Mumbai, made three changes there, and then reversed and went back to it here. So players sense that uncertainty, I think. The second issue is Butler's captaincy. This is so far below the standards that Butler himself and his players would set for themselves. You can only imagine 
his disappointment. Jaws Butler is an amazing player. He came to the World Cup as the top scorer in the 2021-23 Test World Cup. However, that doesn't mean he will be a great captain. His poor toss decision cost England the match in India as bowling first meant that the team was completely wiped out by the heat of luck now. That's all over. England bowled out for 129. The first and second issues overlapped when Moeen was dropped because Moeen is Butler's second in command and he relies on his vice captain to be the communication outlet in the team. Without this outlet, the team lacked some much needed guidance. It is important to note, however, that changing the coach and captain may not be the answer here, as pointed out by England legend Ewan Morgan. I actually think, you know, talk of replacing captain and coach is not a good idea at the moment, simply because of the high turnover of World Cup. The third and final issue is probably the biggest reason for England's downfall. It is down to some awful individual performances. The main bowler in the side, Chris Wokes, did not have nearly enough impact to make up for the absence of Archer. Veteran batsmen Livingstone, Bearstow, and Butler underperformed massively. The poor start against New Zealand may have just kickstarted a loss of confidence, which led to these subpoor performances, according to former this captain is a Michael Atherton. Terrific bunch of players, and confidence has just kind of whittled away, really. It started badly with the opening game against New Zealand in Ahmedabad. It went worse against Afghanistan, and from that point onwards, England lost a bit of faith in themselves. They lost faith in their strategy, the all rounder strategy, which they changed in Mumbai, made three changes there, and then reversed and went back to it here. So players sense that uncertainty. I think. But the bottom line is, individuals are not playing well enough. The nightmare has continued past the world, it seems, as England just lost an ODI series against West Indies and is on the verge of losing a T20 series to them as well. And that's it. One bounce for four. Historic victory here for the West Indies. Keep in mind that this West Indies side didn't even qualify for the World Cup. So is this the end of England cricket? That would be a rash conclusion. The team is still missing key player Jofra Archer and still shining in test cricket with Basball. On top of that, they will have a five-month gap to regroup and rethink their approach with white ball cricket, so there really is no reason to lose all hope. Although England fans have every right to be disappointed, we would like to end this video with a beautiful note from Ewan Morgan. It's easy to forget sometimes in, in, in sport and in life that when we make pass judgment or try and critique performance that in the change room are 15 human beings living and breathing every emotion through this tournament more so than we are as fans and as, as broadcasters.